Hey guys, Thunder E here, and we are back with our professional camera review with my main man, Marion Tell. How's it going, man? Very good, thank you. Good. You go. As you can see, this time we are checking out the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. I know you guys have been asking for this. It's finally here. It took a while because Marion actually took this device to a very unique location. He went kite surfing in uh, North Carolina. Yes. I believe it's the Hatteras Autobanks. Correct, yes. So, so why? Oh, well, it was Thanksgiving and all my American friends are busy uh, seeing their families and having dinners and arguing, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so I went with my Pakistani, Bulgarian and French friends to go kite surf because we don't have that American Thanksgiving tradition in our blood. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So, yeah, he took the camera there for a spin lots of photos but we're digesting this down to a few photos here so without wasting any more time let's jump in and here this one we show you just uh, because it's a nice shot it's like you get all the details in the sky you get all the details in the shadows uh, it's a very balanced photograph i think it's nicely achieved tele photo regular daytime yeah nothing to complain about on this one these two photos have been basically taken in about like 20 seconds uh, from one another. I thought it was very interesting to observe how the Huawei recognizes sunset environment and really does everything it can to make it look kind of awesome <laughs> because sunset photos are a little bit boring. But uh, yeah, see how on the right side how the sky has really nice tones and gradations on the left side how the phone recognizes, yep, this is a sunset. I'm going to en enhance all the colors into those directions that, that are what we like to see in a sunset photo. And here we go again. This is the portrait mode, which is not my favorite mode in cell phone cameras. Um, maybe you remember that uh, is, uh, it always gives me a little bit of a cringy feeling. <laughs> it's like, because the background seems to be blurred out uh, in a very artificial manner. Maybe you see how actually the blur kind of fades into the body uh, or the wetsuit of Boreana. It was very windy, by the way, in case you <laughs> didn't recognize. Uh, again, same criticism as a lot of other portrait modes. The foreground stays perfectly in focus, whilst the background uh, gets very blown out, blur blurred out. Uh, I don't like it, to be quite honest. Uh, as of right now, only the Google Pixel 3 did a really good job at it. Uh, I highly recommend using the aperture mode instead of the portrait mode inside the Huawei because it gives you more options to play with. So here we go, we're looking at a um, normal lens RAW file and um, every time you shoot, you shoot RAW, uh, you also get a JPEG with it, which is very helpful. Um, I just wanted to show you something. So this is a 40 megapixel RAW compared to the 10 megapixel JPEG file that comes with it. So you get an idea of how the sizes compare. It's a pretty difficult um, environment for a camera, this backlit environment. That's why I, I took this photo. Um, I enlarged the JPEG that we just saw earlier uh, to the size of 40 megapixels so we can compare the RAW and the JPEG and just to see what the, what the internal algorithms of the phone do to make the JPEG look good. So you see um, the biggest difference in the, these two files is that the JPEG has recovered the vignette of the lens. So as you see here in the RAW file, the, the lens gets very dark towards the sides. Um, luckily, Huawei's internal algorithm does a good job at recovering this. So uh, I did the same thing in my um, capture professional capture program, uh, Capture One. So I took, I got rid of the vignette. I want to show you the 100% view because uh, the lens is impressive. It's 40 megapixels inside a little cell phone. That is not bad at all. You get loads, lo loads of details. Uh, the sharpening is actually really acceptable. Um, I did not extra output sharpen this image at processing it. Uh, as I mentioned, well, no, I didn't mention, but um, you get the feeling that the lens is actually a small lens and there's a big chip behind a small lens, so it's obviously not perfect, but it is a very decent file. So um, I shot the same image actually with the iPhone just to, to compare those two phones. So this is the iPhone. Um, maybe if you have seen our last video on the iPhone, you remember that um, the iPhone does an outstanding job in my perception at backlit environments. And once again, it does that here. I think the smart HDR of the iPhone is very well achieved. Uh, the uh, JPEG of the Huawei is, is very contrasty, very dark. I can of course go ahead and try to brighten it up and see, see what I get. But I end up with blown highlights. So the iPhone did a better job here than the Huawei. 
Nonetheless, Huawei gives an impressive file. Here is a, a snapshot that was just a very nice lighting environment, um, blue hour. I um, wanted to show you this one in particular because it's the wide angle lens and there's a comparison of JPEG and RAW file in this particular case. Uh, JPEG has surfaces that become really, really, um, they lose texture basically. As you see, this is the JPEG. Uh, most of the surfaces become kind of flat, which is unfortunate. So it may be a mixture of uh, Huawei attempting to get rid of the grain for you or uh, actually a very strong JPEG compression. Compare this to the RAW file where there's actually a lot of noise. Um, I think that with a little bit more fiddling inside my program Capture One, I could actually attempt to avoid this amount of grain, but um, I wasn't able to do it just right away. Um, but on the other hand, uh, comparing details, like let's for example say in this house in the background, comparing the RAW file to the JPEG, the RAW file has actually a lot of details, which is great. So same environment here, I shot the same shot with the wide angle and the tele lens and I wanted to show you again what this looks like. So the wide RAW compared to the JPEG, so you see how much recovery the JPEG does for the vignette of the lens. And I did the same thing in Capture One, so I basically treated the RAW file a little bit to get more details out of the shadows, actually even to recover the highlights a little bit, and I get a very, very nice file out of this. I like this one, the wide angle lens is great. Um, Telelens, as I mentioned earlier, only eight megapixels, so it's not that impressive. This is like the closest we can go to this, uh, this particular file. Uh, if we zoom in further, then we're getting lost in uh, artifacts. So here is the JPEG in comparison. JPEG has a little bit more detail in the shadows and my version of a treated RAW file. Um, yeah, looking fun, it's a great lens. Here I'm comparing a night mode versus a regular shot at night, a regular photo. And the night mode it recovers a lot of, um, of surfaces that you would normally lose, like highlights and, and shadows. In this case, look for example at the red light, which is completely recovered in the night shot and it's completely gone in the regular photograph. So um, unfortunately, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the night mode also looks quite painted to me because it's a very strong HDR and the surfaces become a little bit flat. Um, but the regular night, like just taking a photo at night instead of using the night mode is also pretty good. Like um, this phone does a quite a good job, this particular case with the tele lens. And I've got a comparison to the wide angle lens here. There it is. So you see this is the night mode and this is the regular night shot, just a photo at night. The photo just, just like that without using, using night mode looks actually very good. I'm surprised, like the, the phone does this very well. And same thing here, you get a little bit of this paint-like feeling to the night mode because it's a very strong HDR recovery that's going on internally. Uh, you also get a little bit of a clarity-like feeling, which is like the, the local contrast increase. And um, you have to like it, basically. It's a, very, uh, it's a very kind of candy version of the same environment. So you've heard Marion's technical breakdown. What are your overall thoughts on the Mate 20 Pro? All right, overall, overall thoughts. I think it's a, it's a great camera, actually. It's like, um, Maybe you remember in February we tried the P20 and I was pretty blown away by the P20 and the quality of the photos because I was just not used to seeing such quality lenses and sensors inside cell phones. So, and once again, this is absolutely great. Uh, not so much to complain about. Uh, if you want to use this, um, I don't want to say professionally, but if you want to take like serious photos with it, then definitely shoot RAW files because it feels like the JPEGs often compress surfaces to a, to a point that there is not a lot of texture left. You want to avoid that ideally. Um, the only downside about RAW files is of course that you have to deal with all the data you're creating, so you have to be ready for that. Um, pretty amazing, 40 megapixels on the regular lens, that is, that is like, that's really high quality. Um, you see, like, you slightly get the idea that there's still a, a small lens being used with a big sensor, so you get this fall off of sharpness towards the sides, sides of the frame. And then the wide angle lens, 20 megapixels, also pretty amazing, and I love the wide angle because you can be very close to the action and shots look very dramatic. And the tele lens is a little bit more of like a gimmick for me personally. I mean, 
It looks fun. Uh, I wouldn't want to go ahead and attempt to print a file that comes out of the telenets, for example, but it's definitely good enough to like, share photos with your friends. And it's, it's cool, yeah. There's, there's a lot going on. This phone has a lot of things going on for itself that, uh, that um, earlier, a few years ago, you would only have had in a point-and-shoot camera. Yeah. All right, Mario really likes the Mate 20 Pro. I like the camera fit, yeah. All right, cool. There you have it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions or any comments, uh, Marion will try and help you answer those. I will at least relay the questions to him. Otherwise, if you're looking to pick up the Mate 20 Pro, definitely use the link down below. Uh, check it out and also follow Marion on Instagram. His Instagram handle is... Marion said photo. Yes, and I'll leave the link for you guys down below. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel mm -hmm. and always enjoy your entertainment. Bye.